Hello to all of my amazing spider nerds, Dante D here and welcome to the channel where we talk about comic books and other geek stuff. It would be common knowledge if I sat here and told you that Spider-Man is hands down one of the most popular superheroes of all time and I probably would be speaking very accurately if I told you he is the most popular superhero of all time. This is actually a debate that's been going on on this uh, channel, on this show, for quite some time. Who's more popular, Spider-Man or Batman? They are both huge titans in their respective companies. But I think we were able to answer the question effectively about a year ago when uh, we did an episode on the YouTube channel where we talked about the most profitable geeky franchises of all time and surprisingly enough uh the spider-man franchise the spider-man name actually brings in more money than the batman name needless to say i, I think the batman stories overall are better written than the spider-man ones and uh some of the best stories ever written in comic books come from batman but nevertheless spider-man is more popular and because of that so many people are trying to get into spider-man especially with this with uh the spider-man movie that just came out in uh in december december 2021 people are trying to get into spider-man so i wanted to dedicate an episode to talking about the essential spider-man story so if you're just getting into spider-man and uh you really want to know what stories to read without having to sift through almost 60 years of continuity. Uh, that's what we're going to be doing today. I'm going to try to easily just lay it out for you the essentials. Okay, the essentials when it comes to Spider Man. And honestly, it's, it was really hard to. To narrow it down, I have about uh, 13 picks on this list. Uh, they're not going to be in any particular order, but and also this is my opinion. Uh, if you are a Spider-Man fan, longtime Spider-Man fan, watching this, and uh, you think there is another story that uh, should have been on this list, uh, please let me know. Let me know in the comments. Re re reach out to me on social media, whatever. So just jumping right into it. Uh, and I'm not going to spend too much time talking about every single story here, but uh, clearly the first story that we're going to be talking about is the story that appeared in Amazing Fantasy 15. And for those of you that are new to Spider-Man, clearly Amazing Fantasy 15 is the first appearance of our favorite wall crawler. Uh, Spider-Man is actually a character that almost did not see publication. Uh, Martin Goodman, the editor of uh, the editor in chief of Marvel Comics at the time did not like the idea of a teenage teenage superhero uh, he thought that teenagers were only meant to be sidekicks not heroes right and Stan Lee said well you know what this amazing fantasy book is going to get canceled anyway let me just try it out see what happens and Spider-Man appeared in the last issue of Amazing Fantasy which was a failed science fiction magazine and he turned out to be uh, a hit. So clearly they threw him in his own title. But I think why Amazing Fantasy 15 is... I mean, it's it's an important story, not just because it's Spider-Man's origin, but I think you're really starting to see a, a, a new breed of superhero coming out, out of these pages. Because, you know, up until this point in uh, 1963... Or 1962, I think. One of the two, 62 or 63. Superheroes, the stories, the origin stories would usually go, you know, superhero gets this power and thinks like, you know, I have this power now. I'm going to use it for good. But I think we saw a more realistic representation of what somebody, especially a teenager getting new power, would do. And Peter Parker, he gets these, pa these powers and he was like a 90 pound weakling. Now he gets these powers and he finds himself... Not wanting to do good with the powers, but 
wanting to go to show business, make some money, see if he could become more popular. And it's not until the end of the story when, I know it's not a spoiler saying at this point, but at the end of the story, we realize that, uh, sorry, Peter realizes that with great power comes great responsibility because Uncle Ben gets murdered, shot to death because of uh, his inability to stop the, the criminal uh, at uh, at the show there uh, so really really great story there and clearly really important now an original copy of amazing fantasy 15 would cost you probably in the millions if it's high grade uh, but even in lower grade it probably would still cost you as much as a house <laughs> so uh, for those of you um, that want to read this story and don't want to take out a mortgage I think the best way to experience Amazing Fantasy 15 is in uh, either the Amazing Spider-Man uh, Omnibus vol Volume 1 or the Amazing Spider-Man Epic Collection I will link both um, in uh, in the description to, to this episode uh, and good news for those of you out there uh, who were looking to get the Amazing Spider-Man Omnibus. Um, it is going to be reprinted. I, I did a review on this this Omnibus actually a couple, maybe about a couple years ago. And um, recently, people have been reaching out to me saying, like, "Hey, I'm, I want to get a copy of this, but it's listed on Amazon for like five hundred dollars." Well. That's not the actual retail price. Those are people that uh, have the book and now they're trying to sell it because the print run is over. The thing about these omnibuses is that uh, they have a limited print run and once the printing is sold out, uh, they do not print anymore until they decide to do another print run. And, and usually for the more popular uh, omnibuses, uh, I think there are usually a good three, four years in between uh, the print runs. Uh, I picked up mine during the last print run. Uh, I actually got it for Christmas about uh, about three, four years ago now. But uh, I saw that it is being reprinted this year. I, I believe it's coming out in the spring. I will link um, I will link it in, this, in the uh, description for the episode for sure. So you can pick that up. I, th I honestly think the Amazing Spider-Man Omnibus um, is an essential for any Spider-Man fan for sure. But also uh, for any anybody who's just interested in comic books at all like those it, it has the first 40 issues and uh, i believe there were also a few annuals in there and a few crossovers that uh, spider-man had in his early days at any rate these are probably the most important first some of the most important 40 issues in comic book history. That's just my opinion. And you probably could make an argument that the first 40 issues in the Amazing Spider-Man Omnibus are in and of themselves uh, essential reading for any Spider-Man fan. But, uh, you know, because you have a, a lot of uh, introductions of a lot of the A-list Spider-Man villains and a lot of uh, the most beloved characters from spider-man and peter parker's scooby gang but uh i mean at the end of the day though we want to look at the biggest events the things that people really really remember about uh spider-man and that brings me to the next one you could definitely make an argument um for the amazing spider-man number 33 and the issues that follow this is the uh, master planner storyline and from from a story perspective i think that's not what really makes this uh th these issues significant i think the reason why people really love uh the master planner storyline story arc is because of the panels and some of the work that we get from steve ditko here uh these are some of the most memorable panels in comic book history they're, they're just gorgeous and uh collectors of comic books uh always go after these these books just because of the significance and uh how memorable they are with respect to steve ditko and the amazing spider-man series as a whole but in terms of narrative and storyline i don't i don't i wouldn't really say that they are 
super, super important. But the next one that we are going to talk about, which is The Amazing Spider-Man number 50, uh, that is definitely a memorable issue and great with respect to storyline. This is the first appearance of the Kingpin, but I, I wouldn't say the first appearance of the Kingpin is what makes this uh, issue essential reading. What makes this issue really essential is the Spider-Man No More, the iconic picture of Peter Parker walking away in a dark alley and the Spider-Man costume uh, sticking out of a garbage can. It's just, it's so memorable and really important if uh, if you want to get a good idea of the Spider-Man narratives and the Spider-Man continuity this is really important you really need to read uh, amazing spider-man number 50 it's just really great to see why peter parker wants to quit as spider-man and also what gets him back because obviously he goes back or we wouldn't have had the following whatever 700 issues of spider-man right but this also served as a basis for the terrible terrible toby mcguire spider-man 3 uh film uh, nevertheless, it, it, this storyline was just so iconic because uh, it, just due to the fact that it was used as the model for a major, major film. Amazing Spider-Man number 90. Uh, this is the death of Captain Stacy. Great, great issue. I, I really think that this served as a little bit of foreshadowing of what was to come. And we'll get to that for sure. And I, for those of you that are huge Spider-Man fans, you know exactly what I'm talking about with their foreshadowing because in, uh, in Spider-Man and the amazing Spider-Man comics, the uh, Stacy surname is definitely cursed. <laughs> I really think that this is one of those that really, is important because of the the death here okay because before this event here people didn't really die in comic books and 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 stay dead major characters didn't really die in comic books and stay dead anyway and now you have this character captain stacy who made many appearances in the uh amazing spider-man comics now he's dead right so uh definitely an important moment in peter parker's life and he really kind of blames himself for not being able to to save him right and all of these stories uh amazing spider-man 50 amazing spider-man 33 i uh, of course i'm going to link in the description the episode description uh works in which you could read reprints of this because obviously the original issues for these books and these stories that i'm talking about uh are very very expensive and collectible. I mean, if you have the cash to burn, go ahead, get the original issues. But if you just want to read, I will have links for you where you can read these for a fair price. Or heck, you can even just go on a Marvel Unlimited and read them all if you want. But if you're like me and you need to hold something in your hands, check out some of the recommendations and recommended reading that is going to be attached to this episode for sure. Uh, I'm not much of a digital reader myself. I n always need to hold something in my hand. Moving on, Amazing Spider-Man number 100 to number 101. Some people might disagree with me um, with this pick here. This is actually a personal favorite of mine. It is the storyline in which it is the first appearance of Morbius that we have in these books here. But this is also the moment in which Peter Parker actually starts becoming a spider and you see him with multiple arms. If you're like me and uh, you grew up with the uh, Spider-Man animated series, uh, they actually did an adaptation of this in, in that. So uh, it was actually really cool. Uh, if you have Disney Plus, you actually can watch it on Dis is Disney Plus. It was just just great. Now this is this next pick here uh, is Amazing Spider-Man number one twenty-one. If there is one story on this list that is 
as important as Amazing Fantasy 15, which is the first appearance of Spider-Man, I believe it has to be this one. This is the infamous death of Gwen Stacy issue. Uh, and it, it's 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 recommended. It's not it's not just recommended reading for uh, Spider-Man fans. It is required reading, I think. And this is what I was talking about when I mentioned the foreshadowing uh, with Amazing Spider-Man number 90 and Captain Stacy dying. So Captain Stacy, Gwen Stacy's father, dies in issue number 90. And then we move on to Amazing Spider-Man number 121, wherein Gwen Stacy dies. And again, this just wrecks Peter Parker. He fails to save the woman he loves. Spider-Man thinks that he saves uh, Gwen Stacy because he does catch her with his webbing when the Green Goblin throws her off the bridge. But you see this little sound effect. Uh, it's this little snap uh, right near Gwen, Gwen Stacy's neck. And it's really kind of cool how they... I mean, it's sad for Gwen Stacy, but basically what happens is from Peter Parker catching her with the whiplash there, she ends up sn snapping her neck and he, he blames himself for her death. And it's, it's very s sad. And you, the, only those people that were around at the time that this comic book came out can tell you how huge this was. Many people actually consider this to be the end of the silver age of comics and the beginning of the bronze age. I myself uh, can can attest to that and i am a firm believer in amazing spider-man 121 being the beginning of the bronze age that shift to darker stories and uh those stories in which people actually die in comics and you get that that darker tone and you get the idea that you know comics may not be just for kids anymore this was actually collected in a beautiful uh, trade paperback called The Night Gwen Stacy Died. Uh, I will link it in the description because, like I said, this is essential reading for any Spider-Man fan and uh, a huge moment in Peter Parker and Spider-Man's life. will be remembered for, for years and years to come. I can guarantee that to you. I believe this is also collected in The Amazing Spider-Man Omnibus Volume 3. believe that I actually still imprint... Uh, to this day. So I will uh, link that as well if you're interested in picking up that that book. And th all these omnibuses for Spider-Man are just, just beautiful. I have the first two. Uh, and I will eventually for sure get the third as well. Amazing Spider-Man number 144 to 151. Why are these important? This is actually the original clone saga and i use the word original because uh, there was a, an infamous clone saga that followed in the 1990s and we definitely will get to that as well but uh this is where peter parker thinks that gwen stacy is actually alive and she comes back and that panel where he sees her for the first time he's in shock it's actually very very cool and i think this is a huge huge moment in uh, the the Spider-Man continuity, and I really think it's it's important for any Spider-Man fan to read this because this is this wasn't just any issue of Spider-Man. This is the the issue wherein Peter Parker it was it was a possibility that Gwen Stacy was coming back, but as you progress through the story arc, you find out that she's actually a clone, and uh, you know she's actually still dead. So uh, that was kind of kind of sad, right? <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think they actually have a trade paperback, uh, which is the the original Clone Saga. I'll link that as well if you're if you're interested. Amazing Spider-Man number two thirty eight. This is the uh, introduction of the Hobgoblin, and the Hobgoblin. Yeah, you can really argue that he's very very derivative of the original green goblin but nevertheless hobgoblin became just as popular as the original green goblin and this was just a great story arc uh it was full of mystery and uh definitely one of the best uh put together spider-man stories in my opinion F i mean nowadays we all know who the original hobgoblin ended up being but back then it was like a mystery and you know they they really 
they those writers did a great job to kind of mess with you in uh you know at any given time you could have thought that it was many different many different uh characters and it was just uh cool how they wrapped it up so the original hobgoblin introduction definitely important and would recommend uh picking picking that up Amazing Spider-Man 251, very famous issue here and uh, super, super important in the life of Peter Parker and the uh, Spider-Man continuity, the 60-year history of Spider-Man. This is the uh, black costume introduction in the main Spider-Man series. It is a, uh, a homage to Amazing Fantasy 15, but now you see Spider-Man in a black costume. Awesome issue, and uh, the the black costume, they kept Peter Parker in a black costume for a very, very long time. In the uh, Amazing Spider-Man series alone, he was in, uh, they kept him in that for a good I think almost 50 issues um, by the time he was uh, back in the red costume. So very important. And of course, we all know that black costume was a result of the symbiote that uh, Peter Parker picks up in Secret Wars. And it's the symbiote that eventually becomes Venom. Going into our next book, which I think... Uh, this this the previous book, uh, Amazing Spider-Man 251, segues into our next one perfectly, and that is Web of Spider-Man number one. This is the only, I think, yes, this is the only non-Amazing Spider-Man book on this list. At one point, actually, Spider-Man had four ongoing monthly series. They were Amazing Spider-Man, Peter Parker's Spectacular Spider-Man, Web of Spider-Man, and then just the uh, self-titled Spider-Man uh, book. But I think of all the Spider-Man titles, it was mostly the amazing Spider-Man titles that really kind of moved the story forward. And all the most important things happened in the amazing Spider-Man. It was the first Spider-Man title really. And, uh, and it was the flagship title. The other ones were more like Peter Parker's Spectacular Spider-Man, definitely more supplemental. Uh, collectors are starting to pay more attention to uh, Spectacular Spider-Man. I know that back in the day, I picked up Spectacular Spider-Man books like, we're talking maybe only 10 years ago. I was picking them up for cheap, 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 like less than a dollar each. But now if you go on eBay and you try to pick up Spectacular Spider-Man books, they're, they're going up in price too. Don't know why, but nevertheless, they are too. And I really think that's because uh, the Amazing Spider-Man books now are virtually un untouchable. Uh, anything prior to 1990, for sure, is is untouchable. They're, they're, they're getting very, very expensive. And uh, the days of great deals for Amazing Spider-Man books, original issues, are, are gone. So now I think people are starting to turn to the next best thing, which would be Peter Parker, Spectacular Spider-Man. And uh, Web of Spider-Man, of course, also the Todd McFarlane Spider-Man from the from the '90s as well. But uh, Web of Spider-Man uh, deserves a spot on this list and uh, is definitely important to uh, the Spider-Man mythos. And it's just such an amazing story because this is the issue. It's it is a number one, but this is also the issue in which. The symbiote leaves Peter Parker and is feels rejected. It's the famous bell tower uh, scene where he's in a church uh, belfry and the tower, the, the bell's ringing. And uh, of course, the symbiotes don't like loud noises and he just leaves Peter Parker feeling rejected. And by this point, Peter Parker is aware that uh, the symbiote is trying to take over him. So... Uh, super, super important story. And of course, following that is Amazing Spider-Man 300. This is definitely, this is the first appearance of Venom. One of the most famous Spider-Man books uh, of all time. But uh, the the Spider-Man Venom uh, rivalry is, is legendary in comic books to this day. Super popular. Venom is a blockbuster character in and of himself. And uh, this is the first time... We see him, 
but uh, the story and the writing here is just incredible. Uh, the the Venom, anything with Venom, and the first Venom storyline was just uh, beautiful and uh, super, super memorable for Amazing Spider-Man. Amazing Spider-Man number 369, or sorry, 361. It seems like all these uh, <laughs> these last four books are kind of piggybacking off of each other. This is the first appearance of uh, Carnage, and that Carnage storyline is uh, just amazing, the first appearance of Carnage. Uh, now, of course, Carnage has become a legendary Spider-Man villain in such a short period of time. Uh, and, but that those first three issues, the introduction of Carnage, just stellar, stellar work. Some of the best Spider-Man writing, I think, uh, I, I've seen and definitely a personal favorite of, of mine. Now, here's where <laughs> people are going to probably disagree with me, and that is the Clone Saga. Uh, I do think the Clone Saga, as controversial as it was, is important in the life of Peter Parker and important to the, the Spider-Man continuity in general. Uh, for those of you that are new to Spider-Man, the Clone Saga was super controversial and I could probably do a whole episode just on the clone saga and the, uh, the kerfuffle basically for lack of better words that uh, happened in the nineties because of it. But originally the clone saga was really well received, but the, uh, the writers and Marvel in general, they just wanted to keep the story going. And uh, it just dragged on way, way too long. It was two whole years before they wrapped up the Clone Saga. But nevertheless, it is a super important uh, story arc uh, in, in the life of Peter Parker. And I definitely would recommend picking it up. The trades, this, this series is so long that... It's not collected in one trade. It is collected over five. There are five volumes of the Clone Saga. I have the first three, but I haven't been able to pick up the last two just because they're out of print. So I'm kind of waiting for those to go back in print so I can uh, finally read the whole Clone Saga. But from what people tell me, uh, the Clone Saga is actually a lot more palatable and a lot better to read in trade paperback form uh, because it they just did a... the, the um, the trade paperback editors did a great job of melding the stories together to make it to make it a little bit more cohesive and um, palatable for a, a story arc. Uh, the Clone Saga also was collected in uh, two omnibuses, uh, Volume One and Two. I believe those are out of print, but uh, I'm sure those will hit the presses again uh, sometime soon. And the last book, finally, that we are going to be talking about here is uh, Amazing Spider-Man. Number 700, uh, this was originally the last, it was supposed to be the last issue of the main Amazing Spider-Man uh, series, okay? Uh, now, Amazing Spider-Man did relaunch in, I believe, 1999, but uh, they eventually picked up the, picked up and resumed the original numbering uh, later on, but I think this is a really important story because uh, this is where Dr. Octopus successfully finally beats Peter Parker. And how does he do it? He is on his deathbed, dead and dying. Actually, not dead and dying, but he's just dying. <laughs> and uh, he manages to transfer his, his consciousness into Peter Parker's body and Peter Parker's consciousness into his own dying body. And... It's it's cool, super incredible, because Peter Parker essentially dies. He dies because he has Doc Ock's dying body. And now we have Doc Ock, who is now living Peter Parker's life. And The Amazing Spider-Man ended for a bit. And what followed was 30 incredible issues of the Superior Spider-Man. And uh, this was a series wherein... Uh, Dr. Octopus was 
everyone saw him as Peter Parker, but he, we all, all the reader knew that it was actually Dr. Octopus who was being uh, Spider-Man. A lot of great character development here for Dr. Octopus. You really get to know him. Um, he really, you really start to almost kind of sympathize with him. I mean, he's, he's definitely darker than Peter Parker. Uh, he's, he's essentially the Sith Lord version of Spider-Man, but he's not trying to take over New York or, or do anything. He's, he's actually still, it seems like he's fighting for the greater good, but he's doing it from, he's very Machiavellian, I think, and how, and how he goes about doing that. To me, he actually did seem superior. I actually liked Doc Ock better as Spider-Man. Uh, I know it's kind of blasphemous to say in, uh, in an episode dedicated to the, the, the wall crawler, but uh, it was it was just just great and uh, really important to uh, to any Spider-Man fan. I highly recommend picking up that trade paperback as well as any of the trade paperbacks uh, containing the superior Spider-Man. These books and ways that you can read these stories, like I said, will be linked in the de in the uh, the description. I will not leave you in the dark uh but i think if you go ahead and you read all of these stories uh you'll be in good shape and you will be pretty uh well versed in uh spider-man mythology definitely but at the end of the day if you don't want to spend the time or the money to read all of those uh stories i think the most comprehensive representation of all of the major events in Spider-Man and Peter Parker's life are uh, in this book here, and it's called um, Spider-Man Life Story. It's by Chip Zdarsky and Mark Bagley. Uh, great, great book. Now, basically what it does is it puts Peter Parker's life together all in one Story. So we, we start off seeing uh, Peter Parker in the 1960s as a high school student in him becoming Spider-Man. But then he ages uh, with, he ages as time goes on. It's not like, uh, you know, you get to, to 2010 and he's still like, a, you know, a 30 year old uh, man. You know, he's, he actually ages in here, but it's really kind of cool how they meld all the major points in his life and they include it in this story. So uh, each chapter is dedicated to an era. So you have the 1960s, you have the 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, and then 2010. So it's really kind of cool because a lot of the real life events, um, a lot of things that happen in real life and, and, and in real history actually happen in this book. And we see how Peter Parker and Spider-Man react to them. Like, uh, you know, they, they talk about the, the Vietnam War in here. And I think there's a mention of Watergate as well. Uh, there's, there's uh, obviously in the early 2000s, we see a chapter on 9-11. Uh, uh, really cool. But at the same time, you're getting most of what I talked about in uh, in, in, in the issues that I that I mentioned uh, throughout this video. So you're, you're getting all that pretty much in one trade paperback, it's only that thick. So if you don't wanna spend all the time to read uh, all of those, those stories and you just kinda of want a general overview of uh, Spider-Man's life, pick this up, highly recommend it. Uh, it was great. I actually picked this up in a bargain bin, believe it or not. I think I only spent like $3 on it. So uh, definitely worth it. I'm sure you can find it for cheap, but uh, I, of course, I will link this in the description as well. So that about does it for our uh, episode today. We'd really love to hear from you all. What are some of the Spider-Man stories that you think are essential for anybody getting into Spider-Man? Would really love to hear from you all. Uh, if you're on YouTube, Hit me up in the comments. If you're listening to this as a podcast, feel free to find me uh, on social media. I have Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, and you can find me at Geekery D. Thank you for joining me here today. Until next time, this is Dante D signing off. I will see you all in the next episode. <laughs>